radio brute force attacks, and a little binary phase shift king theory. All that and more this time on Hack 5. This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello and welcome to Hack Fitted 5, <laughs> the weekly dose of techno lust. I'm Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morris. <laughs> We're having a great time today because we are going to get into some brute force attacks so great. Yes. Oh. Yeah, we're doing a lot. We've been having a lot of fun with um, all of the RF stuff we've been yes. doing lately. The Yardstick One and the RTL SER, great. The, the epic radio duo. Radio having so Doom. so much fun with that. Totally. But yeah. because today we felt like getting more in depth, uh, today in this episode we're going to be checking out a Python script for RF brute force attacks because apparently that's a thing with RF cat and a compatible dongle like the yardstick one. We're going to do some maths, which I'm going to let Darren do that part because <laughs> uh, regarding these types of online brute force attacks because I'm terrible with math. Uh, we also get a tiny bit, but not too much into clock signals and binary phase shift keying and we're going to answer some of your questions too that we've gotten feedback from. So very, very good questions from you guys. Right, and so if we just do a quick recap cap here on the replay attacks before we get going into brute force attacks we got a little demo set up and if you remember from episode 1909 what we were able to do is determine uh, the key that our wireless power switch would use by checking out the FCC ID on the back of the remote and if I press the on button here the Yay! clock turns on there we go can I be honest though like yes. I've been checking the frequencies on every single one of my remotes around yep. my house now. <laughs> nice. I'm like, ooh, what's this FCC ID go to? <laughs> so in our case, uh, this that thing is 315 megahertz. Likewise, you could just scan around until you see the blips because that works too. And they they seem pretty obvious in a tool like GQRX in or fact, SDR Sharp, for right. example. You've got SDR Sharp on your laptop going. So let's yeah. go ahead and take a look at these signals. Um, so I'll just hit off. Yep. You saw that blip? Right there. Yeah, I'll hit it again. Yep, there it is. Yep. Yeah, got Good some flipping. nice long blips as long there as you hold go. down the button. Look at them blips. <laughs> Pretty blips. <laughs> so uh, then what we do is we record that. We use GQRX to record that or whatever have you. We record it as an audio file yeah. and then we pull it up in Audacity and we get something like this where you know you see the little ones and zeros uh, in binary, that is amplitude modulation on off keying. Look. It's a little waveform that basically comes down to binary, and we, we can convert it by hand, um, and then we convert it to hex, and then we feed that into RF cat. And when we do that, let's see, the light's off, so it will look something like this. I'll go ahead and enter RF cat, tack R. And I have it in my clipboard because I don't feel like typing all that stuff. <laughs> but we set our frequency to 315. We set our modulation to OOK. We set the baud rate and then we transmit. And this is the binary equivalent or the hex equivalent of the binary data. And we send that 20 times. And if you're and curious where we got that, watch our previous episodes. Right. And so when I hit enter, <coughs> boom. So that was just me hitting enter. And then I also the saw remote. it on SDR Sharp as well. So oh, I got good. my nice little blip. And there we go. Uh, that's, you know, and the, the signal goes on. Uh, but it, what if we just knew the frequency and how many bits of data there were in this signal, hmm. right? Well, that brings us to an awesome tool which uses the RFCAT libraries to do a simple brute force attack. So cool. So to do this, you're going to need a Yardstick 1 or other compatible dongle as usual, RF Cat, uh, Python, Interutils, which all of which we've covered before, and then you'll also need the Bitstream Python module. Oh, right. Forgot about the Bitstream Python module. You can mm -hmm. go ahead and download that over at pypy.python.org, py Bitstream, PyPy. Unzip that. I think I've got it right here. We'll if put I the link in the show notes, by the way. out of this guy, but Bitstream. Oh, it was in my downloads. And then at that point, it's just a matter of doing sudo python uh, setup.py install. Uh, alternatively, you could also just do an easy install. So anyway, just make sure you grab yourself that. And then at that point, we can get ourselves the RF brute pi script. And actually, this came in from a fan. Um, and I want to point out the blog because this is really cool. This is over at Exploit Agency uh, or the uh, LegacySecurityGroup.com, cool. and here you can find the rfbrute.py, uh, basically 
uh, blog post including, there it is, there's all the code. And you'll just go, go ahead and grab that, and I've actually put that into, I don't know why I've got it in my rfcat folder, but if I cat, uh, what is it called, rfbrute.py, you can see, there we go, that's, ah. that's basically all of it. And we'll put that link in our show notes as well. Yes, and thank you, C, for sending that by. Mad props. This is an awesome tool, and I love this because it illustrates kind of the, the just the nicety of having a framework, having yeah. a library like RFCAT to interface with these CC1111 dongles. Um, so let's take a quick look because it is pretty straightforward. Obviously, okay. like many u Linux utilities, it's going to accept TAC TAC help. So we'll do uh, do 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 rfbrute.py. Actually, I haven't made it. Uh, I haven't ch modded it x. So I'll just do it like this. We'll do Python rfbrute.py tac tac help, and you can see. Aha. Aha. We have a couple of standard options here. What we're going to need to do is feed it our frequency, our baud rate, the bit length of how much mm -hmm. we're actually going to brute force. We can specify how many times we want it to repeat. By default, it's going to be 20. We can actually pad it with some uh, uh, any data we want beforehand and afterhand. Uh, and then this, so this small thing is important too. But. So those would be like the zeros, the padding? Zeros or just ones and zeros. Because we've mm -hmm. run into both, and we'll get more into that later. But I just want to like real quick just jump in and show you what happens if we go ahead and try to. And I'm going to turn off. OK, clock's off. <laughs> and we're going to now go ahead and try to brute force this guy. Okay. So let me grab that uh, command and just pop it into my clipboard to make things easier. Okay. Oops. So if I come over to my laptop and enter in Python uh, RF brute pi on the frequency 315.0600, uh, the key length, we know it's 64 bits. And yeah. we knew that from when we decoded it the long way using Audacity. Uh, and then tac t, that's going to pad it uh, with these zeros afterwards. And then we're doing raw mode. And that is to say we are literally just sending these zeros and ones uh, as we see fit. Okay. Um, and then tac keys will also display this out for us. So we'll be able to see it like the, like ah. the Whopper cracking Joshua or some <laughs> other such War Games oh reference. My gosh, so good. And you can see, ha ha. You can see what's oh, you can see the hex totally equivalent of what it's transmitting. That's gonna take a really long time. Mm hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And by default, remember it does use. I'm gonna go ahead and Control C and uh, stop that. But it does. It sends it 20 times in a row. So it's not the fastest. We can actually yeah. speed this up now if we go ahead and let's see. I've got that right. So you here. can choose the time. The the how many times it goes through. Yeah. We if we do this that right here and do the tack this tack R option right here. That's going to specify how many times uh, we, we actually send that signal. And I'm going to say just five times. And you'll see it will go much faster. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, you know? yeah. And you can actually see the binary right here as, it, as it's sending. And <laughs> as you can imagine, we know what the signal is supposed to be if yeah. we come over to Audacity. It's a lot of ones and zeros at the beginning. And this is starting here at the end. So it, it, it might. It's still going to take a while. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to stop this attack. <laughs> Most of you guys want to sit here for a long time and watch us. They wait have been for asking it. for longer episodes. <laughs> oh. You want to wait for it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, <laughs> insert so the Jeopardy music here. <laughs> right. So, first, uh, we're actually just going to do some quick binary math. There it is. So, we know that each bit only has two possibilities. Either it's going to be a one or it's going to be a zero because, yay, computers. So, for a single bit, we know that there are two permutations, there are also only two combinations. But hey, let's not confuse the terminology because this is something that frequently comes up when talking about brute forcing, so we're going to do an example. So with the two bits, there can be four permutations. There can be 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and 0, 1. Makes sense. Yeah. But there are only actually three combinations because the 0 and the 1 and the 1 and 0 are the same. They're just used in it's different just, positions just swapped. according to combinations. So there essentially with combinations, position doesn't matter. So you could think of a ham and cheese sandwich versus a cheese and ham sandwich. Uh, in Darren's case, he doesn't give a crap I which one's care. on top or bottom They're because both delicious. the same. Personally, I prefer permutations because I like the ham to be on the bottom because it's closer to my taste buds. Yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> Math. No, uh, I bring that up because this does come up a lot of times when we're like, oh, how many possible combinations of the? No, we're using the wrong word here because when it comes, uh, yeah, when when it comes to binary, like w the binary bits really do care because the difference between one and uh, uh, a one zero and a zero one yeah. is one is the correct code and the other is not at all. Uh, so. When brute forcing binary, we definitely care about the deliciousness of our ham sandwiches and specifically the permutations because of depending on how fast we can make these attempts on our target, it can either be a really fun and exciting process like watching a web key instantly become a string of hex or long, tedious, boring, monotonous, excruciating, less than wonderful <laughs> event. So to figure out how many permutations there are in the case of binary, let's, let's look at this. Okay, so. For one bit, there's obviously only, the yeah, but it's real simple. So for, for a single bit, it can either be one of two things, a one or a zero. So Kay. there you go, it's, it's two to the one, that's two, right? For two bits, it would be two to the two, or two to the power four. of two, which would be four, because there are, like Shannon even just illustrated, four possible scenarios there. Likewise, if there are three bits, it would be two to the power of three, that would be eight. eight. Four would be 16, five would be 32, six would be 64, seven, 128, eight is 256. Are you, you're kind of okay, seeing where- That's not as hard as I thought it was going Yeah, to be. you see where this is going and it's why we have eight bits in a byte because 256 yeah. and all the good stuff. So the question is how many permutations are there going to be in our 64 bit key? And to do that, we can actually oh. use BC or bash calc to do a little math for us. So. You can either just go into BC here and do your math, or you can echo it to it with a pipe. But if I do, uh, let's say two carat 64, oops, that's an ampersand, ah. two carat 64, we can see cool. that there are. Um, oh, uh, I know this number. You know this, of yes, course. Yes, it's of 18 course. quintillion, 446 quadrillion, 744 trillion, 74 billion, 709 million. 551,616. I just know my numbers really well. Yeah, of course. I, <laughs> we didn't write that down. Right. No, if <laughs> we were to try this five times per second in what we call an online brute force attack, rather than say the thousands or tens of thousands of times per second that we can try in an offline brute force attack, how long would it take, Shannon? Oh, Darren, just 117 trillion years. So we're actually not going to do that because as much as everyone really likes a long episode of Hack 5, just uh, eventually I want to go home and hang out with my cats. Yeah. So instead, for the demo, we're actually going to cheat and set the first 48 bits as our preamble and let RF Brute take a crack at the last 16 bits, which has a mere 65,536 permutations. Yay, 16 bits are fun. That won't take as long. No, it won't. Uh, so to do this, I'm going to go ahead and drop back in here and uh, clear this with uh, Control L, which I, I don't know if, like, I always get, sorry, tangent, but people always ask clear. me, like, why do you type clear? It's like, because if I type, if I hit Control it's L, which is. It's an editing thing. Yeah. So it, anyway, it Control L and bash <laughs> clears things. But if you didn't know that's what I did because you didn't see my hands, it might get confusing. So yeah. anyway, yes, uh, the magic of television. So uh, for this, what I'm going to go ahead is do my pseudo Python RF brute. Actually, I think I have that command right up here. Yes. But I'm going to give it, instead of just the tac, uh, what is it, tac? You have tac -a. T, this tac, tac T option, which adds the padding to the end. I'm going to add padding to the beginning with the tac P option. And in this case, it's going to be uh, the, the binary representation that we already know. Um, and then we're going to send it on its merry way. So let's take a look at that. I actually have a, that in my cheat sheet here. Because that'd and be really funny if you got it. Uh, that's wrong. the problem with ones and zeros, right? On the okay. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and run this. And it is going to complain because uh, sometimes you actually need to reset your oh, yeah. dongle. So unplug and replug your dongle. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and up. That and happens with lots of dongles, by the way. Run this again. There we go. It's transmitting, transmitting, transmitting. Oh, so I see it as going you can crazy see, on SDR Sharp. I'm going to go wide. Oh, yeah. Let's take a look at SDR Sharp. Look, you see look at all this yeah. right here. That's all and from your. Go back to this camera. You can see eventually, <laughs> eventually, how many tries are we up to? A lot. A lot. We're up to a lot of tries. <laughs> but it'll still take a while. Wow. It's 
You're basically like sending out a denial of service over your Yes. <laughs> so in this case now, what you would do, uh, we're not quite, we're kind of fuzzing. We'll, yeah. we'll, uh, let me control see that, is we would actually scroll up here and find, okay, well, we knew it was one of these, and probably either it's either this one or this one or this one. We, we really have to like stay here and watch this thing yeah. and then stop the attack as soon as what we expect to happen occurs. Um, because otherwise we're not going to know. Like it's one thing to, it's one thing to like hack the thing. It's another to like know why it yeah. got hacked. Which is kind of why we've taken so long to get to, to this point where we can brute force it. Yeah. So we understand how how it's working and why it's working the way it is. Right. You want you want to talk about uh, things that could take a while. Uh, I actually know this guy that scanned uh, the that <laughs> zone transferred the internet. Uh, his name is Mubix, and uh, he <laughs> had to hit every uh, IP4 address on the internet, which is really fun because we can actually see that, you know, wow. because IP4 addresses are 32-bit. Okay. Let's just do that again. If I echo uh, 2 to the power of 32, because there are two possibilities, a 1 or a 0, and there are 32 bits, and I send that over to bash calc, you will see a really large number. Yeah, and that is how many IP4 addresses there are. There's like, what, 4.2 billion? Awesome. If we likewise do for IP version 6, which is the new hotness, much larger number. Whoa. Much, much. So, <laughs> mad props to anyone that can name that number in the comments. Yeah, um, have fun with that. Yeah. Speaking of which, we are going to uh, take a quick break, thank our awesome sponsor, and when we get back, we have answers to some viewer questions, some other fun stuff, and talk about some projects in the future, and all sorts of good stuff. So, we'll be back right after this. If you've got a great idea, you need to get yourself a great domain, which is why we are huge fans of Domain.com. And if you've been watching for a while, you know how much we love Domain.com. They're fast, affordable, reliable, easy to use, fun to go drinking with. They'll have your website up in like no time. And getting started with Domain.com is a snap, whether you're looking for a new .com or some hosting or whatever have you, because they've got an awesome domain discovery system. But here's the thing. Right now is the best time to head over to Domain.com because they're having an epic, mega, huge sale. Seriously, this is like the big one for the year. So what you'll want to do is use the coupon code HAKJUMBO to get yourself 35% off new domain registration. It's a limited time offer. It's between now and November 30th, so act fast. Head on over to Domain.com, use coupon code HACKJUMBO, and be sure to tweet some love at the kind folks at Domain.com for supporting Hack5 for so many years. So remember, when you think domain names, thinkdomain.com. By the way, probably shouldn't DDoS a whole bunch of frequencies all willy-nilly-like because that could cause complications you don't want wherever yeah. you live. <laughs> yeah, actually, um, we should really be doing this in a Faraday cage or something because the last thing we need is a some controlled like environment? industrial control system at the next place over, like suddenly the refrigeration units fail because like we sent the right combination of ones and zeros. Why is there fire <laughs> from Chevron? What's going on? No. <laughs> that would never happen. <laughs> no. It wouldn't. It would not happen. Okay. <laughs> so we, so <laughs> we have some user questions. Yes, we do. Some feedback. Uh, the first one comes from Anna Molly, who says, the RTL433 program you got from GitHub specifically targets the signal from the Accurite 592TXR temp and humidity sensor. There may be differences in the signal compared to other sources. For example, the baud rate may not be set the same. Also, looks like the program assumes the signal is encoded via Manchester. These issues could be the source of your inability to decode the data. Ah, uh, yes. In fact, Manchester? Okay, he, it's a fantastic place. Uh, it's west of Sheffield. You go through the Peak District. It's beautiful. Uh, they have lots of sheep there. Um, they also have Manchester United, which is obviously the best team. Uh, or no, is it Manchester City? I don't know. Is that Let a me know in the thing? comments. This is a sports ball thing. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, and, and it'll take you straight to Hollyhead, too. Okay, uh, off the geography tangent. Basically, what we're talking about, this Manchester encoding, uh, and, I, and I should probably preface this by saying RTL 433 uh, has the ability to understand lots of different temperature sensors, humidity sensors, lots of different things. And so I don't know, maybe there is a way to get it into just like a raw mode. But you bring up a very interesting point that we haven't really talked about. And I know at the, at the beginning of this series, we said that we weren't going to go down the RF rabbit hole, as it were. But let's just take a quick look at this one. Because to understand Manchester encoding, we first need to understand something about clock signals. Mm. And uh, basically, 
uh, in RF communications and actually in various other telecom technologies, uh, you'll see a signal the oscillating between high and low or one and zero for the purpose of coordinating actions. And you know, so far we've been ignoring this in the demos, but if we actually look at, say, the signal for the light switch that we've been uh, taking a look at recently, mm -hmm. here I will pull up that audacity again. And if I zoom out, actually I think this is the version of it where I have stripped the ones and zeros. Let's see if I can, oh, yep, so I had it actually cut. So this is the signal down here to the right oh, where yeah. if I, again, zoom in, you can see one, zero, one, zero, uh, yada, yada, yada. But right before then. It looks like that preamble is just a set of ones and zeros. That's exactly what this preamble it's is. It's a pattern. It's a pattern. Uh, it's basically just one oh one oh one oh one oh. So that's the clock signal, right? Yes. Okay, cool. So it's telling the receiver that, hey, I'm about to send data. It'll be at this bit rate. So we can think of it uh, like that four on the floor bass beat that defines the rhythm of a techno track, for oomps, example. Oomps, 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 yeah, oomps, yeah. Oomps, right? just like that. I'm not going to do that because it's annoying. Now, once the receiver and the transmitter are synchronized in beat, the data will line up. Yeah, it's kind of like going like, I'm about to send you some data. This is about the rate <laughs> or something. Of course, you're yeah. like Bill Nye for hackers. Oh. <laughs> no, that's a good thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> in Manchester encoding, the oh, see you say that and then I press the wrong button on the arcade console. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, in Manchester <laughs> encoding, the idea is uh, that basically we don't again. I hit the wrong thing because you got me so screwed up, Shannon. Um, <laughs> let's start at the top. Okay. <laughs> Manchester encoding is a really cool idea because basically rather than doing like this guy has been doing where we send this preamble of ones and zeros, we actually combine it. So uh, instead of having that kind of like beginning message, one, zero, one, zero, we yeah. just cut to the chase. And to do so, uh, we basically are going to encode the data with the clock signal together using a method or a, a Zor, I'm not gonna, let's, Zor? there's so many, look, yes, see, the god of fire, no, um, <laughs> of ones and zeros. I was zeros. thinking like a WoW character. And uh, again, there's so many rabbit holes and this is the reason why we don't get too far down these because we've done that before and then you guys end up like with hour long episodes about RF theory and nobody wants that. So the resulting ones and zeros that you end up getting though, is really interesting because what it does is it takes the data it takes the clock, that one, zero, one, zero, and then and it zores them together in such a way that instead of looking at the bit, like when I look at a bit here, I'm looking at that part and I say, hey, that's high, that's right. a one. I see this and I say, hey, that's low, that's, that's a, a zero. zero. Rather with Manchester encoding, you look at that and you go, oh, that oh. went from high to low and this went from low to high. Uh, there's a great Wikipedia article on it. This image really does it justice because basically what you're seeing is you always have that clock oscillating up and down at the rate, and then you have the data that you actually want to transmit. And using one of the two different methods for Manchester encoding, you end up with either uh, high-low being a one or low-high being a one. Um, it's just a really basic form of binary shift keying or uh, binary phase shift keying or BPSK. It's it's super common method to do this kind of stuff. And you know what? We're just going to leave it at that for right now. That's so cool. Yes. Huh. And as for systematically decoding any kind of arbitrary binary waveforms, we'll take a look at that soon with a tool sent in from one of our fans named Steve. Thank you, Steve. Now, we did get another question from the general 123, and he said, from point 0.26 to point 0.27, is there a subliminal insert there? <laughs> <laughs> He's talking about the blips in the... Uh, uh, <laughs> welcome to the fun of editing and motion JPEG. We could do an entire episode on the back end of how this show it is, is so made. It's so hard to catch those. Oh, man. Um, I have watched him do it, and it's just... Oh. I, I, one of them is just going to be something <laughs> wrong one of these days. But no, there are no subliminal messages in this show. We don't do that. That would be really weird. Um, so take it as... as yes. <coughs> mm. uh, we can get into more about the editing system later, but you know what? I think... I think we have the cure what? in the form of a very expensive NVIDIA Quattro graphics card that will All make right. the thing go better. I will keep watching you do your thing. Also, Good I luck hate with that. motion JPEG. <laughs> we got another one here from Jay, right? Oh, you poor, poor thing. 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jai McGee writes, I love your channel, but agree that it needs to be longer. Please make it longer now. It is all about commercials. Oh, man. What, co what? Commercials. I know. I love this. I got this one. And I was just like, is I, it because we sell the I almost said a bad word. Is it because we sell things? Well, I guess, I mean, we do fund the show through the hack shop where we do have things like the RTL SDRs and the yardstick ones and the hack RFs. But I mean, those are cool things anyway. So while there may be a little influence there, and obviously we'd prefer you buy it from our store because, you know, it helps us keep this thing going. Uh, as far as there being ads on the show, if you're a longtime viewer of, of Hack 5, like so we many awesome people, like now. David Ellington, he's been watching for forever. You guys know you've been watching for the longest time. There used to be like three ads per episode. Oh, yeah. Uh, and now it's just <laughs> one. So I think, if anything, we've done a great service to the community in keeping it very light on the ads. Yeah. But I do value your feedback. And you're right, shows were a little shorter for a little while and we're working on it. We're having a lot of fun like experimenting with the show and that's the beauty of podcasting is we get to define this medium and figure out the best way to do it for us. And we're honestly just doing it for us first. So the fact that you can join us and enjoy it along with us uh, makes it all the better. But um, to be honest about the length of the shows, part of it is because we're in a uber crazy ridiculous dev cycle. We're at the very end of it. We're at a crunch period. We're going to be talking about some new stuff that we have coming. Oh, yeah. And uh, that has kind of taken over a lot of the time. But I, I honestly, Shannon, Shannon, I've been having so much fun just working with you directly on building Aww. segments. So I'm not going to hug you, though, because you smell. And from Tet Tetron, Tetron, Tetron? Tetron. <laughs> Tetron. He says, why Hack 5 interlacing? Did we record on VHS? <laughs> I don't know. Yes. Darren, uh, what's going on with that? I we are recording to a Betamax system uh, that, uh, no, um, Blackmagic, San, Premiere, um, and about $4,000 to buy a new mixer that we need to do real soon, which we will as soon as we have the money to. Until then, you have two choices. You can either have interlacing when we move, or you can have interlacing when we cut to our computer screens and we do like this. And you, you'll annoying. notice we use like really big fonts because otherwise you'll see the interlacing. And if, if I lower it looks the font, really you'll, bad. yeah, it will. If I start moving windows around, you might actually really notice it. So weird little programming aside, but it has been coming up a lot. People asking both of those questions about the blips and the interlacing. So I figured we'll address them. And yeah, so it's, it's one or the other. You know, we can either have bad looking video and great computer screens or great video and bad computer screens. It's pretty much what happens when you have a very small company <laughs> with like one guy. <laughs> we're gonna figure it out, but I think we're yeah. just gonna have to replace the HD video mixer. And unfortunately, no. there's only one available so and it's a 4K expensive. machine and so we're not expensive. going for, no, stop asking. We're not going 4K. Actually, nobody's asking. They only want 4K I on this I had one guy cam. ask, and I told him, no, it's too expensive. Yeah. <laughs> they don't want 4K on this camera. Obviously not. But they definitely want it on that camera. I can see your zits. Thanks. <laughs> Just kidding. Wow, we really <laughs> devolved on this episode. OK. Um, so uh, thank you for uh, watching all the way to the end. Uh, thank you. And you're welcome if you stopped uh, right after the ad. Um, <laughs> with all of that, I want to remind you that if you want to support the show directly, if you want to grab yourself some cool kit, I think we already mentioned it, but uh, these guys and all of the other fun stuff like uh, ducks and turtles and pineapples we and animals, good stuff, really. at the uh, hack shop, hakshop.com, that's where you can support us directly. Um, yes. And you can comment down below, or if you see this on Facebook, you can comment there or wherever the heck you're watching the show. Feedback, Feedback at, at hack5.org. Hack hack yeah, that's where you can send us messages. That's where you can send your C programs that do awesome stuff. Thank you, Steve. Um, <laughs> and uh, with that, uh, while, you're, uh, while you're at hack5.org, uh, check out the show notes, check out hack5.org, so follow and find all the social stuff. Yeah, um, if you haven't liked us on Facebook, I've been post posting a bunch of stuff on there. If you're on the face of the book, otherwise I'm at Hack by Darren on Twitter. See at Snows on the Twitter bar. Uh, on Instagram. Yeah, we're we're going to stop right now. We're done. <laughs> okay, I'm Shannon Morse. I'm Darren Kitchen. Bye, trust your technical lesson. <laughs> See, this is this is why we need to like tighten it down. You know, like just zip it up. Right? Suck. What? Where's the stop button? Oh. Vasectomy! <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. What? You did Pironage! Oh, Pironage! Best show ever! Stop watching this and go watch Pironage right now! You remember the oh, episode? Hence, the hence, <laughs> oh, console style! Hence the. Yes. This, this makes the things go. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. I'll click the remote a couple of times so you can see the rolling code action. So I'll go ahead and hit unlock. Hit unlock. Oh, yeah. Hit unlock. And it keeps so you can changing. See they're, they're changing. Yep.